Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you all my concealer collection. I'm also going to be doing a pretty decent declutter. And the reason being is that I am pretty exceptionally picky when it comes to concealers. A really big reason why I started my channel was actually because I have always, since I was a kid, had pretty significant dark circles under my eyes. And what I eventually realized after trying so many concealers is that I actually wasn't dealing with necessarily darkness. I was dealing with hollowness under my eyes. And there's a really big difference on how you deal with hollowness versus darkness. And I cannot wait to do an updated video and share with you guys how I take care of the hollowness under my eyes and how I really brighten up the area without caking on a lot of coverage. I kind of consider myself an expert at this point on how to correct hollowness. So if that resonates with you or if you're interested, if you've always dealt with dark circles and you're just like, wait, maybe they are hollowness, make sure you're subscribed because I'm definitely going to be doing a video on that upcoming. But I also think this video might be particularly helpful for you because I'm also going to share with you all the concealers that I use that do not exaggerate hollowness. In fact, some of them, a very, very select few, can actually help to fill in the hollow. And that to me is what makes an incredibly special concealer. I will talk a little bit about concealers that help to cover up pigmentation as well. But just so you guys know, when I buy concealers, typically it is for use under the eyes. So I expect them to really deal well with the thin, sensitive skin under the eyes. They can't be very heavy, but they also have to be hydrating. So all of these things are what I look for in a concealer. And if you're new here, my name is Amanda. I would love to have you back. Make sure to check out some of my other declutter videos because this is part of my spring declutter series. All right, so let us begin, shall we? I'm really not going to go in particular order. So let's first start off here with the Undone Beauty Conceal to Reveal palette. So this is actually the shade 420 Pink Petal. And I have had really, really great luck with this. I find that it is such a nice emollient concealer that actually builds up coverage. It is quite reminiscent of another concealer I have here, the Glossier Stretch Concealers. I have the shade G12 in the middle. That's Pink Petal from Undone. This is G12 from Glossier. And then I have Light 10 from Glossier right next to pink petal right there. If you are a fan of the stretch concealer, I highly recommend checking out this one from Undone. It's a touch less emollient, but it still has, you know, a bit of a glow to it. It's just a little bit less emollient and I find that it builds better. I can totally see you using this as an all over concealer palette for the face as like a foundation. I know a lot of people actually do that here with the stretch concealers. I am going to keep G12 from the stretch concealers as a library item. I actually have found as I've gotten older that though this is nice as a very everyday concealer, it definitely doesn't exaggerate any texture or dryness. It does leave me wanting a little bit more and I do think it is because it's just so sheer. However, I know that this is definitely one of those touchstone products, which I always like to keep touchstone products in my makeup library if I already have them. So I will be keeping this. I will be decluttering the shade light. 10 and I'm also going to be decluttering the undone just because it's pretty old um, and I'd like to pick up a new one but again I definitely think this is a great concealer one of the only that I will recommend in this video believe me a concealer that I know a lot of you really enjoy is this one from NYX it is the bear with me concealer serum and you know what I don't think that this looks half bad 
on the under eyes, but it does not help with my hollowness. So this is the shade, this is a thing that NYX does. It's so difficult to find the shade on anything. Okay, this is the shade Fair. Definitely a good fair shade. You can see it's pretty light. You can see it has a nice kind of grip to it. It's not going to look heavy, dry, um, and it does have what I feel is just a very concentrated foundation texture. This is another one of those items because so many of you love it. I'm going to keep it as reference and I actually got a comment from one of you guys the other day and you said that you really like using it as a foundation. So I might try that and see if I can get more use out of it that way. But yeah, I don't think it's bad. It's just not something that I reach for a lot. And if there's one makeup step in my entire routine that I'm like extra, extra picky with, it's concealer. So, you know, that explains that. A concealer that I know I will be decluttering is the, it's actually a corrector from Chanel in the shade B20. I had really high hopes for this corrector. A lot of people just swear by it. Honestly, in theory, it has the texture that I would expect I would love from, from a corrector. You can see it has a nice uh, emollients to it. There's just a general thinness to it. And you know, when you're dealing with a corrector, you want it to be relatively thin because a lot of the times you're using a concealer then on top of it, you know, everyone color corrects a little bit differently, but you know, in theory, it should be a product that can be also used under concealer. And this just looked a bit meh to me, a little bit dry. It just was not one that I got along with, to be honest. And for the price, it, it was just a bummer. A lot of Chanel is very hit or miss for me. There are some holy grails I have from Chanel, and then there are some products that are just like, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what they were thinking. So that is going to be decluttered. Shall we talk about this concealer that, oh God, this really took the internet by storm. And not to be that guy. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna be that guy for a second but hopefully not in an annoying way. This was one of the first concealers that I actually had luck with and felt like really looked good under my eyes. And it felt like for me, I had found a hidden gem. You know, my mom, <laughs> God bless her, she was funding a really widespread search for concealers at the drugstore for me for my entire high school career. Every time I went into a CVS, if she was getting something, I would try and convince her to let me try a new concealer. Like that's how long this concealer journey has been going for me. And this was one of the first that I actually had luck with. So I bought it actually again recently because I'm doing a video where I try your Holy Grail products and I hadn't bought this one in a while. This is the shade 110. It is an absolutely beautiful shade match for me. It's kind of a perfect shade match for me if I want to match my skin tone, not necessarily for brightening. Um, I'm going to save my updated thoughts on what I think about it now for that video, but I will say my thoughts have changed. But anyway, make sure you stay tuned for my updated thoughts on this guy right here, this kind of cult classic product. A product I do not like, um, and I will be keeping temporarily in the uh, makeup library is the Rare Beauty Brighteners, the under eye brightener. I, I'm sure that they have a very sweet name for them um, that I can't think of right now, but this is the shade Light and really, interesting concept to have the cooling applicator here. Um, you know, typically you would take it and dot it like that, but here's the, <laughs> like, that's how they want you to apply this. But here's the thing, you're not really getting the aspects of it being cooling necessarily when you're just dotting it. Do you see what I mean? But when you do this, you are getting that cooling feeling. Um, but the problem is, is that it doesn't really spread quite evenly. Um, but you know, nevertheless, you can always put it on the back of your hand, pick it up with a finger and apply it. So, 
you know, all of that keeping in mind, you know, there is a lot of packaging you can get around, but this just, uh, I don't know what to say about it, guys. But what you're not seeing is that, I feel like it's almost a fake glow. Um, it looks very odd under the eyes. It does not want to layer very well on itself. It doesn't want to layer with other products. Uh, it almost gives me the reverse raccoon eye effect, um, which is something that I have dealt with before. You know, a lot of personal experience here. When you go with a brightener that's just too bright, and in theory, this should be a shade that works as a brightener for me. But really, I think the problem here is the formula. Um, I just find that it's not the best for texture um, and certainly not for any crepiness or creasing under the eyes. So this one will be going into the library. But from what I can understand, a lot of people didn't actually like this release. So um, there's a good chance that it's going to be decluttered pretty soon here. But for now, into the library. All right, the Say Hydra Beam Concealer. I have a few here. I actually have three here, three different shades to share with you all. I have the shade HB Half. I'm almost positive that that's what the shade is, but Say, you you really gotta reprint these stickers because, because there's no way that most of us can even read that. So here is that shade. I have the shade HB1. And then I have the shade HB2. Now, this will be refreshing to you all because this is actually one of my uh, favorite concealer formulas. Something I really, really enjoy about it is that even though it is more of a light coverage concealer, it doesn't necessarily act like it. It's quite buildable. It has a really nice hydrating finish to it. It feels light reflecting, but it also isn't too thick or emollient to be under the eyes in a relatively weightless way. Now for me, HB1 is a great shade for me. It has a little bit of a peachiness for under my eyes and I tend to like that, but I have in the past used the shade two with um, the half shade and kind of mixed it together and gotten a decent shade for me. The only thing I don't like about the product is the packaging. Um, it's specifically the doe foot. I wish it held more product. Um, it's quite thin and skinny. And again, I think the intent is that you kind of stamp it on like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not gonna say none of us do that, but I'm, I'm sure some of you guys do, but I just don't apply concealer that way. So, you know, I'm probably biased here, but I don't really like the applicator. It feels like you have to really go back in and out, in and out to get enough product on. This to me is like a slightly lighter coverage version of my Holy Grail concealer. And I always feel good about how my under eyes look when I'm wearing this concealer, which again, I can't even stress enough how rare that is. And by the way, like when I express this kind of thing and like my troubles with my hollowness, I'm personally open about it because it is a big part of my purchasing decisions. And it's really my job here to be able to give you guys as much information as possible. If you so happen to be in the same situation that I'm in and you struggle with it. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys like some background on that. But my Holy Grail concealer is in this box right here. It is actually a completely fresh tube because if you just recently watched my uh, foundation declutter, which was over an hour long, I'd planned on talking about my concealers in that video, but again, it was a really, really long video. And it turned out that I was like, oh, I can't even find my Kosas anyway, so it wouldn't have worked out. Obviously, I have to talk about this concealer in this video. It's been a couple days and I still can't find them. So I just went out and purchased another one. I know they're around here somewhere. Hence the reason for the decluttering video. Things are a little hectic around the beauty room. 
at the moment. But anyway, wow. I don't remember the last time I looked at a Kosas concealer that was this neat because let me tell you, mine always look like a train wreck because I'm using them so often. But here it is guys, the Kosas Revealer Concealer. Things really changed for me once I tried this out. Now I have the shade 1.5 C and this is a pretty great shade for me. Um, you'll also notice that the applicator is more of a wide paddle. Um, it is loaded with product so you can actually get the product onto the skin when you want it, which is just nice when you're in a hurry. The reason this has become my holy grail concealer is that it is a medium coverage. It builds on itself really well. It's quite hydrating. I really like that it's not one of those too thin concealers. Um, I know that we all prefer something more lightweight under the eyes, but there are some concealers that I just think are too thin. They set down too much and it can actually have like the opposite effect of what I want. I find concealers with a little bit more emollients and a touch of attack actually do better with hollowness under the eyes. It's just something that I've found over the years and I have always absolutely enjoyed the way that this looks under my eyes. The way it wears is absolutely beautiful. The coverage stays where I put it. My eyes look bright. Again, I have the coverage, but above all, the hollowness under my eyes looks flattened and it looks just way less noticeable, which is a feat in and of itself. I don't know how they did it. I would love to know. And by the way, I do think it's worth noting. I know I have gotten comments about this, that some of you have bought this and the smell has changed on you. I totally know what you guys mean. Um, that has happened to me once before with my revealer. I'm going to try and leave the video down below. Um, people were saying like, oh, the, the product is going bad really easily. And makeup chemist that I really trust actually went ahead and tested the concealer. Even though the smell had changed, it was still safe to use and um, the preservative that they use for the Kosas was still working. I understand though, if that freaks some people out, I, I totally understand. So that would definitely be the biggest caveat with this concealer. I, I can't really do my makeup much without it. Um, it's, it's just the best. Now a concealer that I recently tried was this one from 3CE. It's their full cover concealer. And this is the shade 001. I'm probably going to declutter this. It just, it was just so basic. There really is nothing special about this concealer. I expect a lot from 3CE just because they're more of a mid-range brand. Um, they're also a KBD brand that I just love almost, I think the most out of all K-beauty brands, except maybe Romand. And I honestly, I'm not really positive how I could incorporate this into an upcoming video. If you see a way, I will um, do a review. But at the moment, I'm leaning towards just decluttering this. I'm also going to be decluttering the NYX Born to Glow. This is the shade Alabaster. I'm not even positive if they make this anymore. It's, it's not a bad concealer, you guys. Actually, for an affordable concealer, I'm not compelled to repurchase, so I think that um, warrants a declutter enough. Now, this Lancome 10 Edol Ultra Wear All Over Concealer, I am going to specifically keep this for the face. Um, this is the shade Ivory W. Um, for under the eyes, I found it to be a little bit too thin. Um, my Skin was looking for just like a little bit more moisture. However, this doe foot is very interesting. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, it has like quite a divot in here. Um, it's quite big and I don't know, it, very <laughs> wobbly. And you get 0.43 ounces of product in here, which is definitely a decent amount. Again, I can see using this for the face um, it's not overly drying for any, especially, you know, acne patches that uh, are a little bit more dry than the rest of the face. But under the eyes, I think 
personally there are some that I have liked a little bit more. Okay, I think I can go ahead and declutter this. This is the Revlon Colorstay Skin Awake Caffeine Concealer. The reason I'm decluttering this is that I have tried it and I don't even remember anything about it, which usually for me, you know, if I'm impressed with the concealer, I'm impressed the first time. And yeah, I don't even remember what this is like and it's pretty new, so um, I'm going to go ahead and declutter this. I also have a couple of concealers here from Sephora. They are the Bright Future Concealers. I think there's a chance they might be discontinuing this. Don't quote me on that. Um, but this is the shade 04. Very bright serum kind of texture. And then this is the shade 05. Oh, you know what? I am going to keep these because you know what I'm immediately reminded of if you want an eye brightener with a nice thin texture with emollients i'm just gonna go ahead and like spoil this for you guys you guys can be in the know and then everyone else that watches the upcoming video will have to wait for that just go with the one from sephora over the one from rare beauty i feel like you would be much happier so i'm going to keep those and then do an upcoming video um letting you guys know that information after that, I think there's a chance that I'll keep this shade for color correction specifically because this is such a lightweight formula, um, it does layer nicely. And on its own, honestly, I don't think it's half bad. Um, you just, you know, I just have very high standards. I want to stress that. I am probably just going to declutter this. It's from Kier Weiss. I picked this up. It's the shade F112. First of all, I don't, can you hear how like heavy this is? A little bit, a little bit excessive actually. You know, I never complain about a hefty product, but because this is like literally plastic, so light, and then this is really heavy, it, it's just kind of an awkward balance. The texture you can see is quite thick. Um, and it's just not anything I would ever want to put under my eyes. You know, Kira Weiss complexion is weird. I feel like they can't get foundations and concealers 100% right, but their cream products, like their blushes and cheek products and even their eyeshadows, I've really liked. I'm going to go ahead and declutter this. All right, this concealer is really not half bad. It's the Sunshine Under Eye Tint from Milk Makeup but it's really old. Really nice for like a lightweight um, kind of tint under the eyes. A sheer product for under the eyes has to be something really, really special to me in order to warrant it because I could always just put a little bit of foundation under the eyes and it usually looks good. So a more sheer light coverage product has to be really special in order for me to like go out and repurchase and use all the time. So this unfortunately wasn't that for me. However, I will say I prefer this ball applicator to the one from Rear Beauty. You can actually glide it under the eyes the way that it would actually feel nice, unlike the one from Rear Beauty. Speaking of light coverage concealers that do more, this Armani Luminous Silk Concealer is absolutely beautiful and i highly suggest you check out this concealer if you aren't a fan of the kosas or or the say because this is right in line with the say as far as like my favorites like kosas is number one the say and the armani luminous silk are number two so this is the shade number two from armani i could have sworn i had the shade 1.5 um i'm sure i have it here somewhere but Essentially, this is an absolutely exceptional counterpart to the Luminous Silk foundation. I actually find that it has maybe just the same amount of coverage as the Luminous Silk, um, which is a little bit strange to me, but what this does is it kind of adds this beautiful perfected veil, this little touch of extra moisture that I find for under the eyes, it, it's just really needed. It almost feels like it's taking care of your skin when it's under the eyes. It's very brightening and hydrating. You can certainly set it and this would take to powder really well because though it's hydrating, it's still thin. 
I just find it to be absolutely beautiful. I know that a lot of us are used to major full coverage concealer for under the eyes, but I highly suggest checking out a product like this because sometimes just for the skin to look like it's in better condition is what we're actually looking for rather than a ton of coverage. Like good quality skin doesn't necessarily need to be completely fully covered. And it kind of offers that illusion. You know, this is just like my motto. Um, I want you guys to just do whatever makes you happy and makes you feel amazing but I just really highly suggest this concealer. I think it's one of the best. This is a concealer I literally just picked up the other day. It's Dior Forever Skin Correct, um, and this is the shade 1.5. Um, this is a new, uh, what is it called? Reformulation. And I got a comment asking if I was going to try it. I have used this once under my eyes. Again, this is the shade 1 Neutral, and I was happy with it, but I don't want to give my full um, stamp of approval. It, it definitely won't um, replace the Kosas for me necessarily, but I did like it. Um, I am keeping this um, to hopefully review for you guys soon. And by the way, if you guys are finding value in this video, you know, if you've gotten this far, I know we have a little ways to go. I would love for you guys to just, you know, like drop me a comment and let me know or give this video a thumbs up. Um, it really, really helps me out. Um, and I hope you guys are enjoying this declutter series. Now, a concealer that unfortunately did not get along great with me is this one from Jouer. Um, this is the shade Wheat and this is their high coverage liquid concealer. This is heavy duty and it's not drying per se, but I think it's just more coverage than I would like to work with. Um, you could just use less. Again, it's not a bad product, um, but I just don't particularly find myself enjoying the finish. So I think I'm going to go ahead and declutter this. I'm also going to go ahead and declutter this one from L'Oreal, the Age Perfect Radiant Concealer. This is the shade. 205 creamy beige great applicator um and i actually remember thinking hey this isn't half bad but it's just not good either so why keep it you know and it, it, it just can get more use elsewhere it's still pretty new um but speaking of which if you are at the drugstore and you're looking for a concealer the maybelline fit me was a holy grail of mine for years and I still do recommend it. Um, I do think the formula has been slightly changed. That's just my gut telling me that. I don't have confirmation from the brand. I know the shade slightly changed and I just have a feeling, um, just a gut feeling that the formula changed a little bit, but I still do like it. Um, this is the shade 11 Vanilla. Um, and I would just say that if you guys want a very lightweight, buildable concealer that just looks like skin under the eyes, this is one that I would always go back and recommend. A lot of us really love a full coverage concealer, but if you are maybe thinking, Amanda, like I understand what you're saying about something a little bit more light coverage, a way to dip your toes into this is maybe picking up the one from Maybelline. It's really nice, um, never drying, never heavy, just an all time favorite. So I will be keeping it. Now, the Liss Triple Fix Full Coverage Concealer, this is the shade LN3. This is not a bad product. God, I, I remember it kind of being a little streaky under the eyes. Like, I just never got a completely smooth, even coverage the way that I wanted. Um, the formula does remind me a little bit of the one from Rare Beauty. Um, I would say, you know, this is better than the Rare Beauty um, brightener. But again, I just don't think it necessarily wanted to completely melt into my skin. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pass this along. Next, we have the Catrice True Skin High Coverage Concealer. Um, I know a lot of you guys wanted me to try this out because some people were saying it was a dupe. For the Kosas, I know that uh, Kelly Gooch is a fan of this one. This is the shade 002 Neutral great applicator. See, that's what I look for. Something really smooth and feels, you know, luxurious going on to the face. 
I actually don't think this is half bad. It's thinner than the Kosas, but I really do like the way it sits on the skin. Not quite as great for hollowness though under the eyes. So if you're dealing specifically with hollowness the way that I am, um, I don't think this is going to help you with that. But if you're just looking for a really pretty concealer for under the eyes, that's not going to look heavy. And just in general, give you some nice buildable coverage. I do think this is a good one. I am going to declutter it just because I do think it's a good product and I want one of my friends to get good use out of it. Next we have the Moisture Creamy Concealer from Apu. Um, this is the shade three. This is actually a good corrector and concealer in general. I know not a lot of people talk about this um, in the United States. I think it's a little bit more popular overseas, but I just think it's a nice, pretty satin formula. I'm gonna go ahead and keep it. Um, I don't use it a ton, but I wanna start incorporating this shade in particular as a corrector. If you've been interested in the YSL Touche Claw, God, I haven't thought about that product in a while. The Flawless Brightening Concealer from e.l.f. is definitely a better way to go. This concealer is actually much better than that product in my opinion. It goes onto the skin really nice and gives a nice, just a, a general, a more radiant look without being drying. I just found the Tucci Claw to be a little bit drying for me. Also, if you like the airbrush concealer from Clinique, this is a nice option as well. I'm not sure if they still make this. I'm really not sure, but if they do, I'll leave a link down below for you guys. And in general, I'll have links to everything down below. All right, the Clinique Even Better Concealer. This is the shade A60, I think it's Breeze. This is really a nice concealer. But do you see how I keep saying like, these are all nice, like they are all nice. And specifically, I think if you have dry skin and you're looking for a thinner concealer, you're probably going to be a fan of this. Like I can just see a lot of people liking this one for a more natural makeup look. It's just going to look flattering on the skin. But again, it's just, I'm being real with myself here. I don't see why I would keep this for the library necessarily. So I'm going to go ahead and declutter it. I'm also going to declutter this one from Oma Beauty, the Woke Concealer. Um, this is the shade T1. I really, again, I don't think this is a bad concealer. Um, I actually really enjoy the shade. I like the Kosas more. Again, it's, it's kind of a similar vibe to the Clinique one I just talked about. And this one actually has a better shade range. So, you know, if you're stuck between the two, this one is probably more likely to have your shade. Um, but again, both nice concealers. It's just time to make some room. Down to three, three different correctors. Um, the Ficlo Peach Corrector is going to go. It's not bad. I actually really like this thin kind of serum texture. It's quite dewy. It has like a nice kind of tack that I think a lot of you guys will like or some people like in a corrector. But for me, I think it's time to go. These two are both old, so they will be going, but I do still recommend both. The Becca Under Eye Corrector, which is now the Smashbox Corrector. This, you really only need a little bit. And my favorite way to use this one is on the inner corner of the eye. It just adds this immediate bright effect. And if you're not a fan of using, you know, like an inner corner highlight necessarily with a sparkle, try using a little bit of a corrector like this. It just makes the eyes really pop. You know what? I think I'm gonna keep this to show you guys that in an upcoming video. Um, I think that could be really helpful, but then this is probably going. Um, and I do really enjoy the Tarte CC corrector. A lot of people don't talk about this anymore, but it is just miles better than something like the Bobbi Brown corrector. If you're a fan of that one, I highly suggest checking out this one instead because it's just more emollient. There's more moisture there. It doesn't get crackly. Um, in general, I just find correctors that are way too thin to really dry out my eyes. So if you have more mature skin and that sounds like you, I definitely recommend checking this one out. This is the shade uh, light medium right there. So these are all the concealers I'm keeping.
And again, some of these are staples, some of these are makeup library. And these are the ones that I'm going to be decluttering. All right, everyone, so I hope you found this video helpful. Um, I will leave my next declutter video uh, right over here for you guys in case you guys wanna start watching. Make sure you're subscribed for my upcoming videos and I will see you all in my next one.